Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another SAF Builds. Today, I'm building a custom bookcase for my wife because she's got a million anime books and she's got nowhere to put them. So this is what I made for her. Starting off, took a piece of paper and just scribbled an absolute masterpiece onto it. Made sure to sign it just in case any uh, art connoisseurs wanted to pay me for it. There it is. So there's my design. I'm starting off with the base just because I had to glue a couple pieces of wood together. So this is me just milling up the uh, wood. I'm using white ash for the base. And there's a few plugs that kind of accent the rest of the cabinet. You'll see those later. Those are also white ash. So I'm just spreading some glue on this seam that I milled. I didn't bother milling the whole board just because I have to mill it again once the glue dries and didn't really want to do it twice. So starting off, I'm ripping down some pieces of black laminated MDF on my table saw. I'm ripping these down to the completed depth, which is 12 inches. And then I'm cross cutting them with my track saw here, just because I didn't want to bother putting them in my miter saw. So here we go. Boom. Oop. Hit the tripod. That's okay. Next up, I'm cross cutting the top and bottom panel with my miter saw. Just lickety split, just like that. Easy peasy. I think I actually cut these a little oversized and then I trimmed them to the exact length of my table saw, I think. I can't remember, I, I, maybe I didn't do that. But I definitely know I cross cut them. So next step, I took a three quarter inch dado and I put a three quarter inch dado on the back of all of the cabinet panels. This is gonna house the back panel. So on the sides of the cabinet, you won't see the inset back. And then I just screw the back in through those panels, which you'll see later in the video. It doesn't really make a lot of sense just saying it to you now, but you'll see later on. Now it's time to drill the shelf pin holes using this jig that I have. So I just mark the bottom of where I want the holes to begin. So I drill the first hole and then it has a little plug stop. So I put that in and then I just keep on drilling. I think I drilled probably a million holes here. I just went all the way up. My wife wanted them to be all the way up so she could adjust the shelves to the you know nearest whatever of an inch. So I did one side and then I did the other side and then I did the other side and then I did the other side and it took forever. Here I am marking where I'm gonna be drilling the counter bore holes so I can plug them with the white ash like I mentioned earlier. So I take my drill bit, this is a 3 8 inch drill bit and I just drill about a quarter way in each side, top and bottom on both panels. And that's where the drill or the screw is going to set in. And then I can plug it later on. You'll see. So now it's time to build the cabinet. So I'm just lining them up, setting it down, clamping the bottom to the side gable, and then sending some screws through those holes that I just drilled. Now the cabinet is made. You can see it there on the side. Now it's time for the back panel. So all I did was once the cabinet was built, I just measured from those dados that I cut the size of the back panel and I cut it to that size. Now you can see I'm going to lift the panel and slip it right in. Just wait, this is very satisfying. It was like a perfect fit. Ready, ready, ooh, right in there. It was amazing. My tape measuring skills are phenomenal. So now this is what I was talking about before, I think. I'm just going to screw in a screw through the back panel into the gable on a slight angle so I don't go into the cabinet. And this will hold the back and it'll keep the sides of the cabinet um, you know, fresh. You don't see anything. You don't see any exposed MDF or any ugly screws. Um, and yeah, that's just the way I like to build these cabinets sometimes. So I did that. Got it laid out on the floor because now it's time to finish off the legs. And just before I measured the cabinet to make sure I was still under my maximum height, and I was. So now it's time to work on the base for this cabinet. So like I said before, this base is made of white ash. So I took my glue dot piece of ash and I went to start milling it again. So I face jointed it like so. Did it a couple times to get it nice and smooth. And then I edge jointed it again a few times so they were nice and square, 90 degrees to each other. Took it over to the table saw to cut it to its 
finished width, which was six inches, six inches of room beneath the cabinet, six inches of base. Now it's over to the planer to flatten the top of this piece of wood that I'm using. I brought these smaller pieces through as well, sort of cut down on the snipe that I was gonna get. And it worked great because there was no snipe on the finished piece. So now I had to resaw it. And my bandsaw was just a bit too small to resaw it, so I used my table saw. I was very careful, I just went, went up slowly. And I got it close enough so when I brought it over here I could just pull it apart. No need to use my saw or anything. And then I just brought those back to the planer and cleaned up the ugly nubs that were left behind. Next step was on to the base. This is me marking and creating a template that I'm going to use on the actual wood. So both pieces are the exact same. And I had a rough idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like, sort of a uh, mid-century modern style. You can see it here. Bam. Absolutely awesome videographing. Is that a word? I don't think that's a word. So I traced that shape onto both of the pieces of wood that I had cut, and I just cut them out on the bandsaw, staying just outside of my pencil line, because I'll be cleaning it up to the exact shape of the template using a router, which you'll see in a minute. So now it's time to glue that template down to the wood. And I just use this super glue with an activating spray so I don't have to wait around. And I didn't have any double-sided tape, so this is what I used. After I got the template glued on, I took it to my router table where I slowly but surely trimmed the excess off of the piece of wood to match the template using a half inch follow bit with a bearing. And once they're both done, it was time to sand everything. So here's a little mini compilation of me just sanding my life away. I also put a half inch round over on all the pieces um, just to give it a little more comfortable look, I guess. Does that really make sense? I did that anyway. Now I don't have a domino joiner. I'm hoping to get one soon, but I don't have one right now. So I pulled out my biscuit joiner for this, just to connect all the pieces. I cut some slots in the spreader pieces and in the leg assemblies here. And I also put one a half inch down from the top on each leg assembly so I can use Z-clips to fasten the base to the cabinet. And I'll show you that later on. It's, it's almost near the end of the video. So now it's time to glue everything up and the biscuits made quick work of that. Just had to line everything up, squeeze a bunch of glue, put some clamps on and leave it to dry. Next, it's time to address those holes that I drilled to screw the cabinet together. So I took this 3 8 inch plug cutting bit and cut a million plugs into this ash board that I have. As you can see, a million plugs, a little bit less than a million. And I cut them all out, put some glue into each of these little holes, pushed the plug in there with my fingers, and then hammered it home with a mallet. Now to trim these off, I couldn't use a pole saw because the black laminate is a finished material and using a pole saw would just destroy it. So I took my router with a straight router bit and had it up from the base like a 32nd of an inch and then just rolled it across each plug to smooth it out. And if there was any lip, I just came back with a chisel and carefully removed that as well. So as you can see there, it looks pretty good. It was better when I was done with the chisel but I didn't film that, so you didn't get to see it. So last step for the cabinet was to put some finish on the base. This is a golden oak finish that my wife requested. So I put that on, clamped the base to the cabinet itself, and using those Z-clips, I screwed them in to the bottom of the cabinet, and it was done. All that was left was to carry it up two flights of stairs and set it in place. And here it is in all its glory, with all of our little knickknacks and tchotchkes sitting in it. And that's it. Now, if you like the video, consider dropping a like, or if you really want to, you can even subscribe, and there'll be more videos like this coming soon. So see you next time, and bye-bye.